here. Uh, I keep telling uh, Brother Ty, I said, Brother Ty, I need you to come and interpret for me. And he puts forth extra effort into getting, getting here, and my folks don't show up. He's going to think I'm telling him stories to just get him to come, but <clears throat> uh, I want to say I appreciate all of you, though, for being here. And I say with Brother Gary, uh, be sure and stay and have fellowship and uh, share a meal with us after church today. We do have plenty. Uh, I, I just I saw so much food coming in. The steam table is loaded down, and and uh, the dessert table looked awful, awful heavy, also or make you heavy. Uh, but uh, stay and eat with us for sure. I, I was uh, I was reading this about an elderly gentleman had a serious hearing problem uh, and uh, he'd had it for years and he wound up going to the doctor to get it checked out and and the doctor uh, with the new technology and all he installed some special hearing aids in the, in the guy's ears and and uh, tested him and he said you can hear after he tested me he said you can hear 100% he said, it's absolutely marvelous. And the guy was excited about it. He went home and he scheduled an appointment to come back in uh, 30 days. So he, he went back at the end of the 30 days and the doctor checked him out again. And he said, uh, he said, my, I said, they're still working just as good. He said, I bet your family was really excited about this. And he said, uh, I hadn't told them yet. He said, I just sit around and listen whenever they're talking. He said, I've changed my wheel three times already. <clears throat> I, I want to I preach to us today and talk to us about uh, something that I believe that will be a benefit to us. A lot of times we don't consider things important until they've already slipped, slipped through our hands and we, we find out that they, we've wasted that time. We let it get away from us. Uh, when you come to the end of life, don't have any regrets. That's what I would say as far as a title this morning. When you come to the end of life, don't have any regrets. Uh, I keep telling people, of course, as you get my age, uh, I'll be 81 here pretty soon, uh, you realize that uh, time is a valuable substance. Uh, and I, I just, I tell folks all the time, I was talking to Bobby's wife, talking to Peggy uh, yesterday, and I told her, I said, uh, the most important thing that you've got is the time that you've got left. And uh, I would just say to all of us today, you may, some of you may, you're a good bit younger than, than me, but uh, uh, Brother Ty, I believe we are going to need you. Uh, I think my folks came there. And just go back there and greet them and, and uh, fix it up for them. But uh, you're, you're, you're going to come to a place in life that, uh, that you... Uh, you're going to wish you had done some things. You'd have made some changes. Amen? All of us have wasted some time, some energy, and uh, we didn't get our priorities straight. But I believe God can help us today that we get them straight from here on and that we have a good life. Amen? Uh, I, I, I read the story where... Uh, Joseph and Mary were on their way to uh, Bethlehem uh, and they, to be taxed. And uh, his wife, was uh, Mary, was expecting she was going to have a baby. And, and uh, the trip was hard on them. And when they got there, they got to looking for a place to stay. And they looked, uh, went to motel after motel to try to find a place to stay. And 
uh, the Scripture tells us, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Uh, there was no place for them. They, and and I, I just thought as I, I took this one little passage here uh, because there was no room for them in the end. And uh, I thought, we need to be to where we make room for Jesus. Amen? Uh, they, I, I don't know, uh, as, as I just thought about, as they went from motel to motel looking for a place to stay, and I don't know whether, uh, it, at, at least it was told that uh, they didn't, didn't, didn't have any room. Now, whether they did or not, it could have been that uh, because of them making the trip and being dusty and, and dirty and, and her pregnant and everything, it could have been that they just said, no, there's, we just don't have any room because they were looking for somebody that had more money and more class. Uh, I, don't, I don't know all the reason why there wasn't any room, but uh, I thought about these people. They probably regretted when they found out who it was, they regretted that they didn't make a place for him. I know most motels and hotels, they save back a few rooms. You know, they don't just rent them all. They'll, uh, they're saving back because there's some high dollar rentals go at the last and that sort of thing. I don't know what the reasoning was, but I, I feel like that there was some regret when they found out that it was Jesus, the Christ, that was there. And I just thought about uh, we must make room for Jesus in our lives. If we don't, the day will come that we have major regrets. If we don't make room for Him in the now, there'll be some major regrets that we'll have at a later point in life. Uh, I thought about some reasons that uh, possibly that uh, they didn't make room for him. Maybe it was the lack of knowledge. You know, a lot of times people just don't know, you know, what's going on. They don't know uh, who it is that they're dealing with or how important the situation is. True. We, we make mistakes and uh, we don't do things the right way because we don't have the proper knowledge. But uh, I, a lot of times you just don't know who the man or the woman is that the Lord has brought you in contact with. And you don't know what His plan is. And therefore, we sort of push Jesus out of the picture. But I, I'm, I'm just trying to help us today. I want to read you something. I read this uh, several years ago. I may have even read it here at this church. But uh, this story, it, this is a true story about uh, a pastor and his wife uh, taking an old church. And I know something about taking old churches. I, I remember uh, some of the churches that I went to that was run down and uh, needed a lot of repair. And uh, I, I, I've taken churches, didn't have anybody going to it. The be all I had was just the building. But uh, anyway, let me read you this story. It said, uh, the brand new pastor and his wife, newly assigned to their first ministry, to reopen a church in the suburbs of Brooklyn, arrived in early October, excited about the opportunity. When they saw their church, it was very run down and needed much work. They set a goal to have everything done. Uh, to have everything done by the first and have their first service on Christmas Eve. They worked hard to re, uh, to, on the repairs of the pews, the plastering of the walls, the painting, and all the work that needed to be done. Uh, and on December the 18th, were ahead of schedule and just about finished. On December the 19th, a terrible storm came. A driving rainstorm hit the area and lasted for two days. On the 21st, 
the pastor went over to the church. His heart sank when he saw that the roof had uh, been leaking, causing a large area of plaster about 20 foot by 8 foot to fall off the wall of the sanctuary just behind the pulpit, beginning about head high. The pastor cleaned up the mess on the floor and not knowing what else to do, but uh, postponed the Christmas Eve service, he headed home. On the, way to, on the way, he noticed that a local business was having a flea market type sale for charity, so he stopped in. One of the items was a beautiful, handmade, ivory-colored, crocheted tablecloth with very uh, unique work fine color, and a cross embroidered right in the center of it. It was just the right size to cover the hole in the front of the wall. He bought it, and he headed back to the church. By by this time, it had started to snow. An older woman running from the opposite direction was trying to catch a bus, and she missed it. The pastor invited her to wait in the the warm church for the next 45 minutes, which would be the the next bus to come. She sat in a pew and paid no attention to the pastor while he got a ladder and hinges and and various things to put up the tablecloth as a wall tapestry. The pastor could hardly believe how beautiful it looked as it covered up the entire problem area. Then he noticed the woman walking down the center of the aisle. Her face was like a sheet. Pastor, she asked, where did you get that tablecloth? The pastor explained. Uh, The woman asked him to check the lower right corner to see if the initials EBG were crocheted into it there. They were. These were the initials of the woman and she had made this tablecloth 35 years before in Austria. The woman could hardly believe it as the pastor told how he had just gotten the tablecloth. The woman explained that before the war, she and her husband were well-to-do people in Austria. When the Nazis came, she was forced to leave. Her husband was going to follow her in just uh, the next week. He was captured, sent to prison, and never saw her husband or her home again. The pastor wanted to give her, give her the tablecloth, but she made the pastor keep it for the church. The pastor insisted on driving her home. That was the least that he could do. She lived on, on the other side of Staten Island and was only in Brooklyn for, for the day for a house cleaning job. What a wonderful service they had on Christmas Eve. The church was almost full. The music and the spirit were great. At the end of the service, the pastor and his wife greeted everyone at the door, and many said that they would return. One older man, whom the pastor recognized from the neighborhood, continued to sit in one of the pews and share and stare, and the pastor wondered why he wasn't leaving. The man asked him, where he got the tablecloth on the front wall because it was identical. Identical to the one that his wife had made years ago when they lived in Austria before the war. And how could there be two tablecloths so much alike? He told the pastor how the, the Nazis had came, how he forced his wife to flee for her safety and he was supposed to follow her but was arrested and put in prison. He never saw his wife or his home again all the 35 years in between. The pastor asked him if he would allow him to take him a little, a little ride. They drove to Staten Island and to the same house where the pastor had taken the woman three days earlier. He helped the man climb the three flights of stairs to the woman's apartment, knocked on the door, and he saw the greatest Christmas reunion he could ever imagine. This is a true story. We must be careful to make room for Christ to use us when situations arrive. I just thought 
Brother William, how busy he was and how he wanted everything to be perfect. And right in the midst of it, God had His hand and was doing something. He was reuniting a a marriage that had been apart for 35 years. And I just thought, this man didn't miss it. He didn't have any regrets about that. That's the reason he penned this. And I was able to read the story. Uh, We have to be to where that we are aware of what God's doing in our lives. Uh, Sometimes, I know Brother Jim, sometimes we get so busy. We caught up with all the the things that go on. But uh, really and truly, if we could just slow down and hear the Spirit of God speak to us, that the Holy Ghost would speak to us and guide us. These people that's hurting, these people that's got messed up lives, these people that needs help, if we can just slow down and hear His voice and be to where we obey Him in those times. I want to make room for Him with all the affairs of this life and especially as I see the day approaching, I want to make room for Jesus. Don't you? I read another story. There was a a certain rich man in the book of Luke that was talked about. This rich man was uh, clothed in purple and fine linen and he fared sumptuously every day. And there was a a guy, and and this is not a parable, This uh, this is a story because parables doesn't have names, but... Uh, there was a man named Lazarus. He was a beggar. He he wasn't he wasn't somebody that uh, that you would look at and say you know that uh, this no doubt his clothes were dirty, uh, uh, and he was begging. So that means he didn't have he didn't have any money any funds. But uh, I believe this this man named Lazarus was a preacher because. This rich man, he knew something about God. He knew something about uh, who could tell the story. And no doubt this beggar, day by day, talked to him when he'd go out and he'd come in. And he would uh, explain to him about life, that you need to, you need to get right. And, and uh, the Bible said that uh, the beggar died. And... Uh, he went to Abraham's bosom. That was in paradise at the time. And the rich man died and he lifted up his eyes being in torment and there was a great gulf that was fixed between them. And uh, the rich man didn't, he didn't uh, take the time to receive Christ or receive the Lord. But uh, I see him begging for Lazarus to just dip his finger in water and and touch his tongue because he's tormented in those flames. And uh, he was wanting Lazarus to go back and witness or talk to his family and tell them there was a lot of regrets that this man had where this preacher didn't have any regrets about him taking time out of his schedule to take that woman home and taking time out of his schedule to take this man and allow him to meet up with his wife and them have a reunion. Uh, But the rich man didn't take time. He didn't have time. He didn't have room for the Lord in his life. And we have to make room for the Lord. Amen. We have to make room for Jesus. Amen. Uh, This rich man didn't do it, but he had a lot of regrets, no doubt. Uh, I just thought uh, this as the the beggar was there and he had sores and the dogs came and licked his sores. I just thought, uh, who would want someone like this? Who would who would want to be around someone like this? And, and I thought about uh, folks in our church, uh, people that's got needs, people that uh, I, I just. I just want to compliment, and I know she's not up here, but uh, Sister Jeanette and Sister Heather, uh, them taking a burden for, having a burden for this Sister Diana, that uh, they go to get her and bring her to church, and, and not only that, they go to the, to the hospital, they go to the rehab center, 
and uh, and minister to her. And uh, I'm, I'm just saying there's people that is not going to contribute to your life that you need to make room for the Lord to use you to bless them. Amen? Are y'all getting, y'all getting the message this morning? God has intentions of helping people, but we are His hands. And we are His feet. We are what He's got to work with to bless other people and to help other people. Uh, there'll be people that's not that desirable that uh, God will want to use you to help them. Uh, we'll have a lot more understanding after we draw that last breath. This rich man didn't understand a lot of this until he opened his eyes in hell and being in torment. He had a, a good understanding at that point, and we don't want to wait till we get there. We want to be to where that we have room for Jesus now, in this hour, right now, that we have room for Him to do what He wants to do in and through our lives, that we can have the life that He wants us to have. Uh, I just thought uh, Lazarus, no doubt, had talked to him and and tried to tried to help him. That those motel managers that when Joseph went there and and he is asking for a place, it, my wife is expecting. Uh, do you have any room? And they said we don't have any room. Said the best we got to offer is the stable out there with the the cattle. But uh, uh, you welcome to that. If if they had a known, I just thought if they had a known who it was, they'd have given him the best room. They would have. They would have been. They would have provided the best food. They would have provided uh, the midwife to take care of the situation. If they'd have just. If they'd have just known. A lot of times we don't have knowledge, and and like like this uh, situation with this pastor, uh, it it none of it made sense until he got far enough down the road that he could see the reuniting that God was using him to bring with this older man and older lady. Uh, I, I just thought to him or her, it was just a, a young carpenter and his pregnant wife. But uh, sometimes, folks, we entertain angels unaware. Sometimes uh, God brings people into our lives that uh, we don't understand what's going on or, or what's happening, but... Uh, I remember my brother-in-law, Brother Persinger, was talking to me one day and telling me that uh, he was in this parking lot and uh, this man that was in ragged attire and had this cart uh, pulled up beside him there and, and the Lord just spoke to him to give that man $20. And uh, I can't remember if he said he gave him the $20 or he started to drive off and uh, anyway, he, he got out to talk to the man. And just from the time of cutting the switch off and getting out of the car, the, the man, the cart, everything was gone. He was not there. I just say, God, uh, he, brings, he brings people and angels into our lives. And we need to be aware of what God's doing in our lives that we make room. What He's really wanting out of all of us is just to make room for Him. He, he's got good plans for every one of our lives. He's got, he's got good plans for you. His desire is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I mean, God wants you to have a good life down here as well as heaven when you get finished. But many times He uses us to bring these things uh, to light and to help people. Amen. We want to be available for Him to use us. Amen. And to love people through us. We want it, want it to be that the Lord can do what He desires. Uh, we can visit Jesus when He's in prison. We can go see Him when He's sick. We have that ability. 
In Matthew, the 25th chapter, it talks about, he said, when I was hunger, hungered, you gave me meat. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was a stranger, you took me in. Now, I, I just thought about, God help me to be conscious when people's really hungry to help them, to feed them. I know we see a lot of these signs up, you know, these people, and, and, and a lot of it is it, it's phony as it can be. These guys make more money than, than most of the folks sitting here do. They, on, a, on a good day, they, they make good money that, with their little signs, and, and some of them have all different kind of signs depending on who's driving up that they can show you whatever sign. But there's some people out there that really do have needs. And I just say, God help me to see that one that you're wanting me to connect with. That one that I really can help because there's some people that really need help. And that's the reason that I, I seek out people, that, especially widows or people that uh, I know are having problems. And uh, I put them on salary. I send them a check. I, I try to help them. But I don't want to miss it if there's somebody that's hungry because it just might be that I get to feed Jesus. Amen? Someone that's thirsty to give them a drink. We, I know we have plenty of water here and, and that's not a big deal. But uh, he, was, he said, I was a stranger and you took me in. We've taken in people. I, I've, I've taken in people and, and let them move in our house and live with us. Uh, some uh, that I, folks thought I was a little bit off in doing it and uh, did look like a mistake, but I don't know. Maybe I sowed the right seed. Maybe I'll get to see even those people in heaven. Amen. But it could be that I'm taking in Jesus when I do this, when I take somebody in, when I, when I reach out that hand to help someone. Hey, listen, I'm just saying God wants us to have compassion. He wants us to make room in our lives to have compassion because it may be that you're just doing something for the Lord. He said, I was naked and you clothed me. In other words, you was looking to see if I, I needed clothes. I, I needed help. And, and there's, I, I know we're, right now we're living in a... And, and people can get a job. I realize that. There's, there's more jobs than there is people to, to occupy them, seems like. But uh, there's still some people that's, that's got problems. There's people that has needs. And, and, uh, and of course, I, I know... <clears throat> You just let me know if somebody needs clothes, I'll send my wife to the thrift store because that's where we get our clothes. <clears throat> she believes this, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. She just has to go get it. Uh, but uh, really and truly, we're living in a, a very prosperous time. But uh, seriously, if you know somebody that has needs, uh, I, I could go through my wife's closet and and dress several people, I think, uh, <clears throat> especially being she's lost so much weight. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I'm just saying you have an opportunity to clothe Jesus. He said, I was sick and you visited me. When people's got needs, that's the time we need to be used of the Lord. Amen. When somebody's having, having a rough way of it, if they're sick, if they're having problems, uh, it needs to be that God's people step in and try to help them. Are y'all getting any of this that I'm talking about this morning? I'm talking about making room for Jesus. Making room for Jesus to use us. That you don't have any regrets when you come to the end of life. When you get finished up with this life, that you don't look back and say, boy, I really wasted it there that you can say, God, I did what you wanted me to do. He, he said, I was sick and you visited me. I think we could look out and find some folks that we could visit and be a blessing to. Uh, he said, I was in prison and you came unto me. Uh, be it where that you're, you have compassion for people. Uh, just say, well, they deserve what they got. Oh, uh, hey, listen, 
Wouldn't it be good to have a friend at a time like that though? Wouldn't it be good to have somebody that could point them in the right direction? Truly, they may, have, they may deserve what they got. But it may be that at a time like that, that they would listen to you and look up. That their life could be changed. Amen? That they might make room for Jesus in their life. That they could have a good life. Jesus was right when He was talking about this. And, and then they came back to Him and said, When in the world was you hungry and we fed you? Or when was you thirsty and we gave you drink? Or when was you a stranger and we took you in? Or naked and, and we clothed you? Or, or when was you sick and we visited you? Or when was you in prison and we came to you? We don't remember doing that. Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. So I have privilege to do for Him. Amen. Uh, Any time that I, I have opportunity to be a blessing to somebody else, I don't want that to be a time that I regret. I feel like these people at the motel, they may have some major regrets later on in life. Why didn't I, why didn't I recognize what was going on here? Oh, Jesus never came back that way again. He never, that, that time had passed. And that's the way it is with things that happen in our life. They, they, it comes one time and then it's gone. Amen? Would you make room for Jesus? There's, uh, there's a lot of reason that people uh, don't make room for the Lord. Sometimes, Sometimes it's because people are too busy. We've, we've put too much stuff in our lives that we don't make, don't make room for Him. Uh, not necessarily bad things. Uh, you can just be caught up in the daily activity. Really and truly, I, I, guess, I guess some of it we are responsible for because our want-tos are not broke, broken. Uh, we're just wanting too many things. We want to be to where that we have a little more, and we make ourselves so busy that we push out, push the Lord out, and we don't make room for Him. But may the Lord help us today to determine, I'm going to make more room for Jesus in my life. And if you're here today and you don't know Him, or if you're here and you've backslidden, you've got away from the Lord, uh, today would be the day that you say, Lord, I want to make room for You. I want to make room for You in my life because I want You to rule and reign from this day forward in my life. Amen. Boy, y'all are, y'all are really quiet. I, I guess i pick another subject here and go with it for about another 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> oh, nobody's shaking their head, no. <clears throat> hey, listen, you probably have got the message this morning. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to put effort into making room for Jesus. You really are. There's a lot of things that keeps you away from doing that. Uh, and I, I would say most of it is uh, the affairs and the things of this life. Uh, that they was uh, that Jesus told that parable about the sower went forth to sow, and one of those uh, places that the seed was sown was among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and it choked it. Now the the seed uh, produced a stalk, and the stalk grew up; it had form and everything, but it was not productive. Because the thorns grew up and they choked it. And he went on to explain that. He said it was the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches. When people get so involved in making money, they get so involved in uh, entertainment, uh, we, we get all the toys so we can be entertained. What we've done, we've made put a sign up in the in the window. No room. No room for Jesus. We don't want to do that. Let's take the sign down. 
and determine, I've got room for You, Lord. I've got room for You to use me. I've got room for You, Lord. I, I want to be used of You. I want to bless others. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, I thank You for Your presence. I thank You.